Welcome back to Bible Shorts, episode 137, A Man Called Abram. Now, the book of Genesis loves to map out for us family trees. And at the end of Genesis chapter 11, there is the family tree of a man called Terah. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Aaron. Aaron had married and was the father of a son called Lot and a daughter called Milcah. Aaron's brothers Abram and Nahor also had wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Aaron. We're going to have to remember Milcah. Many chapters later, we're going to run into her again. Now, Aaron died in the land of his birth in Ur of the Chaldeans. And the text tells us one other important piece of information. Sarai is barren. That means she has no children. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Aaron, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Aaron, they settled there. And eventually, Terah died in Aaron. And that's confusing. Because Aaron was the name of one of his sons, but it's also the name of a city where they moved to. Then one day, the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. I will bless those who bless you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot and all the possessions they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired at Aaron, and they set forth. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the Oak of Moreh in a place called Shechem. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. All right, that sounds great, right? Except Abram and Sarai don't have any children. There Abram built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he moved south to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent. With Bethel on the west and I on the east, and there he built an altar to the Lord again and invoked the name of the Lord. Then Abram juried on by stages south toward an area called the Negeb. So, why do we have this little travel log of where Abram stops and builds altars? Well, it turns out these places are special. Bethel is the place that Abram's grandson Jacob will stop for the night when running to escape his brother Esau. Jacob will have a dream of a stairway or a ladder that stretched up from earth to heaven with the angels of God climbing up and down the ladder as God stands at the top. Jacob, like his grandfather Abram, will build an altar there to mark it as a holy place and will actually give it the name Bethel, the house of God. Shechem is a place where Jacob will live after he returns to Canaan after many years hiding from his brother Esau. And he will build a well there. Years and years and years later, a man called Jesus will meet with a Samaritan woman at Jacob's well in Shechem, which in Jesus' day was called Sychar. Then, the text tells us a strange story. There was a famine in the land. 
So Abram went down to Egypt to reside there as an alien, for the famine was severe. And this story only makes sense if Sarai is still young and Abram is not yet an old man. When Abram was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife Sarai, I know well that you are a woman beautiful in appearance, and when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Then they will kill me, but they will let you live. So say you are my sister, so that it may go well with me because of you, and that my life may be spared on your account. When Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. When the officials of Pharaoh saw her, they praised her to him. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's household. And for her sake, he dealt well with Abram, and he had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male and female slaves, female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say, She is my sister, so that I took her from my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and be gone. And Pharaoh gave his men orders concerning Abram, and they set him on his way with his wife and all that he had. Just a heads up, there's something we haven't been told yet about Sarai, but we'll find out later, so don't forget this story. Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him, into the Negev. Now, Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. He journeyed on by stages from the Negev as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar and called on the name of the Lord. Now, Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, and the land could not support both of them living together because their possessions were so great that they could not live together. Then strife arose between the herders of Abram's livestock and the herders of Lot's livestock. Then Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me and between your herders and my herders, for we are kindred, we are family. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. So Lot looked about him and saw that the plain of the Jordan was well watered everywhere, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, in the direction of Zoar. So Lot chose for himself all the plain of the Jordan journeyed eastward, and they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the plain and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were great sinners against the Lord. Clue. Bad things are going to happen in Sodom. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Raise your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land that you see I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring also can be counted. Rise up. Walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron. And there he again built an altar to the Lord. Have you noticed? Each time God keeps 
amping up the scope of these promises to a man who has no children. One wonders what Abram thought about all this. So what happens next? Lot, along with his family and other people, are going to be captured by a group attacking the area around the Dead Sea. Look for Bible Shorts, episode 138, Abram Rescues Lot.